Hello and welcome to the Lucian video tutorial series. In this video we'll be talking about digital signatures in PDFs. Now there are two types of digital signature. The first is literally just a scanned image of your signature that you can place in any PDF for practical purposes. The second type is more of an official digital signature and by this we mean this is a special stamp that you place in any legally binding document that validates the authenticity and integrity of the file. We'll take care of that one second, but first let's take a look at just your basic practical digital signature. Now your basic digital signature works as a stamp. Here's our stamps feature right here and what we need to do is import a scan of my signature to use as a stamp. So our starting point is going to be getting a scanned image of our signature. Now I've pulled my scanned signature into my graphics program. My goal here is to delete all of the white in the signature, leaving only the actual lines of the signature. Now this is really important, and the reason why is because when I stamp this image onto my PDF, I want the background PDF to be able to show through this image everywhere except for where I have lines in the signature. So I'm going to delete this background now. Now the way you do this will depend entirely on your graphics program. If you don't have a graphics program that does this, Take a look at our knowledge base. We'll have a topic there called Create a Transparent Digital Signature under the PDF section, and that'll give you some instructions for doing this online. Now in my graphics program, I've selected the uh, Magic Wand Selection Tool, and what this does is select everything of a single color. In this case, I'm wanting to select all this white, and so I select it. You'll notice it's selected everything that's white, except it hasn't selected the blue lettering and now all I'm going to do is hit delete and that deletes all of that background color. I'll remove the selection and you can see that I'm left with just my signature. Now I will note that you may have to adjust the tolerance here as you're doing that magic wand selection so that it'll select more than just the very color you click on but rather it'll it'll select anything that's close to that color because there will be some variation in the white of your signature. Next I'm going to switch over to my crop tool and I'm going to crop everything down to just my signature. I don't need this to be any bigger than the lines of the signature itself. And I'll hit crop. And there we go. There, there's a pretty good signature right there. Now my last step is to save this out as an image file that will preserve this transparent background. And by the way, I didn't comment before that you can see this checkerboard pattern in the background. That's typical of graphics programs as a way of representing a transparent background. It shows that there's no image information on top of that. So don't be confused by that fact. Now I'm going to go ahead with my Save As. And as I save this, I don't want to save this as a JPEG. The format I want to use is right here. It's called PNG for Portable Network Graphics. And that's going to preserve my background. I'm going to change the file name to Signature. though that doesn't really matter, and I'll save it. Okay, back in File Center, I now need to import that image as a stamp, and I'm going to do that here from the Stamps button. If I come to the drop list here, you'll notice I have an option down here, Show Stamps Palette. I select that option, and that brings up this dialog that shows all of my stamps. Now I'm going to create a new section called Signatures, and with that selected on the left, I'm going to import my signature as an image. Okay, I'll select my signature, say open, and File Center pulls it in. So now here's my signature showing up as an image inside of File Center. I can go ahead and close this dialog now. Now with my stamps, you can see that we now have a signature section and it has my signature file there. So let's go ahead and select this and see how it works. You'll notice that my cursor is now switched to a stamp, so I'm going to go wherever I want to stamp this in the document, right here by the signature line, and I click to stamp it down. Now I can just drag it and reposition it. You'll also notice that there are some little squares where I can resize it. I can shrink it down so that it will fit in my blank. Go a little smaller. Reposition that. And you'll see that the form behind can show through the image, and that's because we made it transparent. And now I have a nice signature that I can drop anywhere in any document. I'll just click Escape 
and commit it right there to that spot. Let's switch gears now and talk about the second type of digital signature. This type of signature not only authenticates the document like a regular handwritten signature would, but it also validates the document. And here's what I mean by that. This type of signature makes it so the document cannot be changed going forward. And if it is changed, whoever opens the document in the future is going to be notified that the document was changed since the time of your signing. Now, before we can use this type of signature, we're going to have to put a couple of settings into place. First of all, we need to come up here to the Edit menu and Preferences. And over here on the left, we need to select Identity. And we need to make sure that most of these fields are filled in. Organizational unit, that probably doesn't matter. Organization name is nice, but may not be required, but you've at least got to have your name in there. And it's nice to have your email address also, because some of this information may be showing up on your signature. Next, let's come over here to the signing button, and it shows up right over here. I'm going to click this, and again, like I did with the stamp, I'm going to go anywhere in the document where I want to place this signature, and I'm going to click. And this dialog will pop up. Now, the first thing that we need to do is set up our digital certificate. This certificate is like a key, and this is the basis of the validation for the document. If you already have a digital certificate that you use, you may want to select it right here. But for most people, we probably need to create a certificate. And so we're going to click Create Certificate, and this is a one-time thing, and so let's just quickly fill this out. Okay, I'll put some information in there. Now, just go ahead and select the defaults on the rest of these and click OK. Back in File Center, you'll see that now this information is populated down here. Now, this is roughly the way that the signature is going to appear in your document. This could be customized, and on your own, you may want to play with this a little bit. You handle the customization here with the signing template. But for now, we're going to leave everything the way it is and click OK. And you notice that now we've been prompted to save this document. The reason for this is this creates a new copy of the document, which, as we mentioned, has been authenticated and validated and cannot be changed going forward. So let's go ahead and save this. And we'll say yes. And there we go. My signature now appears here on the document where I placed it. Wasn't great placement, but it shows the point. But the important thing is that now that this signature is on here, this is a validated legal document. So there you go. Two ways to digitally sign a document which should cover all of the scenarios that you need as far as signing PDFs is concerned.